broaden the net, isn't it? Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Just saying to our friends here on Instagram that I thought it would be appropriate today to do something a little bit different and just to take some time to connect as a community and as a group of fellow humanity, I guess, for want of another better word just to reflect on the last few days and to acknowledge the enormous tribute uh, that's being paid to Her Majesty the Queen and just recognise that actually this is a different week, particularly here in the UK. I'm here in London and the mood is, is definitely different from other times. And in fact, yesterday I was an event in the evening and it took me through Parliament Square and I finished, it was quite a late finish. And as I came out, I thought, oh, it's quite late. I'll, I'll just, you know, hail a cab and come back to my studios. And the roads were deserted. And I thought, this is a bit strange. It feels quite eerie, really. And as I walked down, I walked down Birdcage Walk down to Parliament Square and it was filled with trucks and police and construction guys and they were putting up huge numbers of flagpoles so they cordoned off the whole area you couldn't get into parliament square i don't know what it's like today whether they were just working overnight or whether it was it's ongoing but obviously putting up all the barricades and this is a week before the funeral so i mean obviously enormous crowds expected anybody going anybody heading down to London all I can say is if you're going to go you're going to have to get there early but you know being here today it kind of reminded me of how I started doing these lives in the beginning and I know many of you have been with me for gosh it's more than two years isn't it two and a, two and a bit years when did we start I think it was the beginning of lockdown 2020 so maybe March April time and these lives really started because I had never really done anything live and certainly never anything personal, you know, from my home or where I happened to be. And it just felt right that as we were all being locked in and shut down, that it was the time to connect and to share experiences and to offer encouragement and support and community and all of that stuff that's so important for our overall well-being. So I just did a live one lunchtime from my kitchen and then it was really lovely to connect. And so I did another live the next day and then I had all these messages from people saying, that was really great, you know, it was lovely to be part of this community. Um, you'll be back tomorrow, won't you? So that's how I ended up doing a daily Instagram live for 16 weeks <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> Then I think I stopped doing it on a Sunday and that became a kind of family day. And then we've now gone down to, to two lives a week, as you know, um, regularly here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Not actually going to be doing something this Thursday because, it, it, again, it just the, the mood, it just doesn't feel right. I love talking to brand founders. You know, I love uh, sharing those conversations, particularly women, particularly midlife women, particularly those building brands that have such passion and often such purpose behind them. But this week it just it just feels right to be a little bit more reflective. So I hope you've got your cup of tea. Lovely comments coming in. This is from Liz Bevan who says, your lives really helped during lockdown, helped us all to feel connected at a very strange time. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Roro Rocks says the daily lives got us all through lockdown. Thank you. Laura, the daily chats were great. Boo the cockapoo, she says, trying to make our way around London. Lots of diversions. Yeah, really lots. I suspect the tube is possibly the best way to get around at the moment. Lots of people coming down to London to pay their respects. I am just remembering, actually, it was kind of like one of those moments and you think, you know, where were you when you heard the news? I remember exactly where I was when I heard the news that Princess Diana had died. And there are moments like that when you do, you just remember. And I think uh, the death of the Queen is one of those moments. I was having tea with a friend and we'd expected it because there'd been a lot of chat. My family WhatsApp group had been kind of all over it waiting for the announcement. And I've got friends in Parliament who, you know, were given kind of warnings early that day that things were not looking good. I and mean, I don't think anybody expected such a sudden death, to be honest. 
um, but uh, you know one one minute with Liz Truss or Boris Johnson and the next minute you know we're hearing uh, terrible news so it was very sudden and I think that's that's part of the shock isn't it anyway I was having tea with a friend and, and we came out and I had to go on somewhere else and I just said you know why not why don't we just walk down to Buckingham Palace we're not that far we could we could just walk down so it was very early it was before the crowds gathered the the TV cameras were all there obviously they'd known earlier in the day that something was was up um, and just beginning we saw the flag at half mast which was really moving to see that over Buckingham Palace and just the mood generally being very quiet and calm and then I walked up to Piccadilly and it was kind of like going against the tide because all the people were coming down to Buckingham Palace, you know, many of them with plants and flowers already. And this was literally, I think, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour maybe after the announcement. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really affecting a lot of people. But lots of you have shared your memories and we've got some comments here which I just thought I'd like to share. Uh, so Anna Downing has written to say, my daughter, Sof Downing, and I went to a garden party four years ago. Although we didn't get speech to the Queen, we saw her close up and it felt very special. Just being in her presence, I can't believe she's passed. Every time I watch the news, I get emotional. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the live later. Well, hi, Anna. Um, yeah, it was very sudden, wasn't it? Oh, thanks, Ali. Nice to say it was... Um, good to do this today. <clears throat> Sarah says, many, many years ago, I had friends visiting from overseas. We went to London and, of course, visited Buckingham Palace. And yes, the gates opened and there was our queen being driven somewhere. She smiled and waved at us. How fortunate that we arrived just at that time. Amazing. You can't, you can't plan that, can you? Uh, Grace says, I was lucky to share. Um, I'd like to share that I was lucky enough to go to two of the Queen's Garden Parties where I was able to see members of the royal family, including our wonderful Queen. Gillian says, in 1953, my mum was chosen to sing in a school choir at St George's Hall in Liverpool for Her Majesty's coronation. My mum was 15 at the time. Gosh, what a memory. Uh, Liz Bevan says, look forward to seeing you later, Liz. What a lovely, appropriate thing to do. I'm going to London tomorrow. To pay my respects to the Queen, I just feel I need to be there. And Cartledge says, I've always felt honoured as I was born on the Queen's birthday and my middle name is Elizabeth, named after her as we shared our birthday. That's lovely. So my own memory. So I met the Queen in person just once and uh, it was when I got my MBE with Kim and I'm just looking at all my comments here, all the questions. Oh, yeah, I'll come back and cover as many of those as I can. So Kim and I were awarded MBEs for services to business. Um, gosh, how many years ago? 15 years ago? Maybe more. I mean, the beauty company was sold in 2010. Neither of us have been connected for many, many years. So going back, it must, yeah, it must be at least 15 years, maybe more. I know that I was able to take three people with me, so we were four all together. So I took my then husband and Lily and Guy came with me. Um, the younger two, I don't know whether the younger ones were born then. I don't even think they were, certainly not the youngest. Anyway, we arrived and Kim and I received our MBEs together because we were obviously co-founders of the beauty brand, which meant that very unusually we went up together to see the Queen and so when we arrived it's all you know very very formal and you're instructed what to do and when they call out your name you you go you're in the big um, I'm not sure that it's the throne room it's next to the throne room and you go and there's an absolute protocol you're a certain distance then you approach the Queen and you curtsy and then you um, get your MBE or OBE or whatever it is pinned onto you by Her Majesty. And then you have the chance to say a few words and then you go. Um, and so when we arrived, we were met by one of the big cheeses at the palace in all his brocade and red uniforms and everything. 
And he took us to one side and he said, ladies, um, you're going to have to be a little bit different. So you're going to have to come with me. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, what's happened? Maybe there's been a terrible mistake and they're not going to give us the, uh, the, the awards. And he said, because you're sighted together, you have to go up to Her Majesty together. And that means that you have to curtsy together. And so we need to practice some synchronization. Well, I don't know if you've ever tried synchronised curtsying, but it's a lot harder than it looks. Anyway, he took us into this, I think it was the throne room, because I've seen pictures of it recently. And it's just us and this amazing guy on this great day. And he said, right, OK, so I'll be the queen. I'll stand here. And when your names are called, you need to come up together standing side by side, in step with each other. I mean, we had no idea that this was going to happen. Otherwise, obviously, we would have spent weeks practicing. And you approach and you curtsy together. You go down and up at the same time. And then each of you will have your opportunity to be presented to the Queen and to have a conversation. <laughs> so we did this. So we spent like, I don't know, 15 minutes with this amazing guy. I wish I remembered who he was or his name because he was incredibly kind. Um, just practicing that moment so that when indeed we did get called up, and I don't know if Kim is watching this, if you remember, honey, that day, it was just extraordinary, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't think we have ever had to synchronize our curtsies uh, after that moment. But anyway, it was, yeah, it was, it was momentous. And it meant a lot. And I know to everybody who particularly anybody in the armed forces, I think that was the most moving thing about that day, was listening to the citations and the extraordinary acts of bravery and selflessness and the charity workers and the organisations and the people who were being recognised. And it was a real moment, you know, I think we felt very uh, undeserving compared to a lot of the people in that room who had just been so selfless for their fellow man and for their country and done such incredible good things. And what an amazing way to, to repay and to recognise and to give all that time. Um, yeah, it was a very special memory. Thank you. Let me read out some of your questions and memories here. Um, Jan says, the vigil last night had me in tears again. I really felt for them. Um, I saw the Queen when she opened the police headquarters. I said, I wish they'd stop people gawping at them. It was hard enough. I know it's hard. My goodness, can you imagine the funeral procession? I mean, there's going to be billions, not only this country, but all the Commonwealth countries. I know many of you watching overseas will be part of that because she was your Queen as well. Um, Wellbeing Angel, nice name. Uh, she says, I have a tour of Buckingham Palace next week, which will feel strange. Absolutely. Uh, Missy Seth says, I've been surprised by my reaction. I sobbed when it was announced. Even my husband cried. Yeah, I've been talking to a few people on the streets, actually. You know, it's an opportunity, isn't it, to have conversations with people, you know, to have conversations with cashiers and, you know, you go into a corner shop or bump into somebody at a bus stop or in the park or a cabbie or whatever. And it's the same conversations that we're having. We're, we're united in this. And I think that's, that's a good thing. You know, death is an inevitability. What do they say? The two things in life you can be certain of, death and taxes. And, you know, that's, that's a truism, well, for most of us, unless you're um, somebody who evades. But yes, death, I guess, is not going to be evaded by anybody, come what may. So it's something that we don't often talk about. And in fact, what we've done this week here at Liz Our Wellbeing, those of you who get our newsletter, you will have noticed that we didn't send one out on Friday uh, out of respect. But we are sending one out today. Um, and it's a very different one. It's actually, we've just put a few, very few carefully chosen things, including um, a podcast about dealing with grief and resilience and I hope that you find that helpful. And we've put a link to a few things as well. Um, and there's another podcast going out actually this Friday, which is a bit different, talking all about grieving and not only for ourselves when we lose somebody, but also how to approach the subject of grief and how to talk about it. Because even if we haven't experienced loss ourselves recently, we may have others around us. 
and how do we best approach the subject? You know, what do you want to say? You often want to say things and you want to say something that's not going to be upsetting and, and you want to be positive and helpful and is it helpful? Should we say nothing? Should we say something? If we do say something, what do we say? So I've been lucky enough to, to speak with many grief counsellors. Julia Samuels, for example, is a great good friend of mine and she counselled the princes after Princess Diana died and she set up the Child Bereavement Trust, an incredible charity, and she writes a lot about grief and she's very insightful. Sasha Bates is another amazing psychotherapist who I've talked to on my podcasts and she experienced grief firsthand. Her husband died very suddenly at the age of 56 and she talks about loss and uh, a lot of the wise words that we hear from these women are so helpful just in general life because actually loss is often not necessarily about death. It could be the loss of lots of things. We can grieve for the loss of a marriage. We can grieve for the loss of a job, for the loss of our children when they leave home. And, or maybe we celebrate that, I don't know. Mixed emotions, maybe. So there's lots of ways, I think, that we grieve and we mourn passing of time and change. And actually, one of the things that's so helpful is connection with community. You know, if we can connect with family and friends, even strangers, many of us are strangers here but we can actually connect with with a common a common theme uh, lots of people loving my stories about the synchronized curtsying uh, yeah Roro Rock says some of the photos of the Queen look just like my mum so I feel like I'm grieving for her all over again yeah it brings back lots of emotions and memories doesn't it for so many of us I can absolutely uh, relate to that Nikki says, we were in Corfu. It was so strange when the news broke. All the Greek people offering condolences, everyone toasting her and thanking her, an incomparable, wonderful woman. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, I think out of sadness comes joy. And I think a lot of it is about celebrating that remarkable life, celebrating her service. So it's this mix, isn't it? You know, you, you don't want to be in a way too cheerful and upbeat and be seen as disrespectful but actually the legacy that she's left behind and the example she set and hopefully the example that will be carried through. I've been fortunate enough to meet Prince Charles many more times and the Queen Consort as well as an ambassador for the Royal Osteoporosis Society, as doing things for the Prince's Trust and the Soil Association, the Sustainable Food Trust and you know the Countryside Alliance, um, which is uh, the Prince's, uh, not the Prince Alliance, the Prince's Countryside Fund, um, which is another of the organisations that I'm um, an ambassador for. So I've been lucky to have been in his presence many times and hear him speak so passionately and how he stands up for regenerative farming and agriculture and the disadvantage. The work of the Prince's Trust is just stupendous absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but my makeup artist friend, Kerry September, who has worked on my face for more years probably than she cares to remember, she has, I think, she's done every single cover of Liz Our Wellbeing magazine, including this one, the latest one. She has made up my mush here and uh, taught me pretty much everything I know actually about makeup. And, and hair as well, because she does that as well. And uh, I remember talking to her not that long ago. And I was doing something, I think it was for the Prince's Trust, I was doing some mentoring. And she said, you know, I, I got my break through the Prince's Trust. And I said, Kerry, I did not know that. And she said, yeah, when I was a teenager, they lent me the money for my first makeup kit. I needed like 200 pounds to go and buy my bag and to fill it with all the makeup and the brushes and the accessories that I needed to start working as an assistant. And they gave me that first handout and put me in touch with other people who could help me with my training and just simple things like doing my own accounts and you know having to write invoices to people and all the things they don't teach you at school, they probably should. And so she's hugely grateful and she's done her own mentoring for Princess Trust because that's what they do, they teach young people, I think it's, is it between the age of 18 and 30? Something like that. And then once you have been set on your way, one of your tasks is to give back. You have to pay it backwards. You have to become a mentor for others. 
and it's an incredibly powerful and strong organisation and so many people I meet, particularly in the creative fields, have been helped through the Prince's Trust. So I do hope that that carries on. I wonder who will take it on. Maybe the new Prince of Wales, because that's the Prince's Trust, isn't it? Maybe they'll rename it the King's Trust. I don't know. All these, all these questions that will be weird. It's strange, isn't it, talking about the King? Gosh. Um, Ali says, my gran had her 100 years birthday card, pride of place, on the mantelpiece. Grace says, I don't quite know how the royal family are managing. They've not really had a time to do so themselves. Yeah, to grieve, you're right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Nina says, I'd love to visit London, but we're in Cornwall, but so thankful for the brilliant TV coverage. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Victoria here on Facebook, she says, um, I lost my much-loved grandmothers in the same year. They were of the Queen's era and had the same kind of hairstyles. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, sorry, I can't see any more of that comment. Um, yeah, lots of happy memories. Uh, yeah. Uh, Island Lover 61 says, she had a wonderful life and was a constant presence at home and abroad. I lost my mum last year. I couldn't have begun to do a fraction of what the new king has done in the last few days. Yeah, extraordinary, isn't it? Thank you very much for all uh, your messages. Lovely to have this community. Just a couple of quick questions that have come in before I finish here. Devon Creator says, any idea when the carol service is, please? Yes, I can tell you. So this is something that our community has grown to love and to put in the diary. We couldn't do it in person for two years because of the crazy lockdowns but we did manage to meet last December and we do have a date for this year so pop it in your diaries now it's Wednesday December the 7th same time same place St Simon's Zelotes Church in Chelsea which is just by Sloan Square so hopefully super easy to get to on public transport I hope you'll all be there and tickets will all go on sale in I don't know a month or so it's on my to-do list, I promise. Uh, I've just been talking to my brother, Adrian, because he will be putting together the musical ensemble for that. Those of you who don't know, Adrian is a conductor married to a soprano, who Victoria, who sometimes sings for us as well, and until very recently has been an organist at Canterbury Cathedral and obviously been involved in many royal occasions and playing for many members of the royal family. He recently moved to Rochester Cathedral and I was talking to him just yesterday actually and um, he was saying that of course all the cathedrals are having to change everything and do lots of services of remembrance and, and get involved in coronations and all sorts so um, yeah so yeah excited about the carol service absolutely lovely personal freak says love last year's carol service and those of you who came we had, you may remember, one of my speakers, the very dashing Lloyd Owen. And he is now, he couldn't say it at the time because he was under a kind of non-disclosure agreement. But he has got a lead in the new Amazon Lord of the Rings. And I've started to watch it because my son-in-law, Harry, is a massive Lord of the Rings fan. And he made his first appearance. Lloyd was first on screen this last episode, episode three. So if you want to check him out... He's so brilliant in it. He plays some, I'm not quite sure, I'm not very good on all those talking characters, but he seems to be playing this very kind of dashing uh, elf warrior. No, he's not an elf, is he? He's, he's making friends with the elves. He's another, he's another being. Um, but yeah, it's all amazing. And it was all shot in New Zealand, these early episodes. I think they've moved it to Wales now for filming. But I remember he was in New Zealand and he was just back from that first chunk of filming in time for the carol service and he very kindly agreed to come and read. So I wonder whether we'll get him this year or if he'll just be too famous. Um, but anyway, it was great. He's got an amazing voice. So yeah, if you fancy um, digging into Lord of the Rings, it's just started. Yeah, and Anthea, Anthea Turner was there. It was, yeah, she was also a reader and very supportive. It was a really good, fun evening. I wonder I can get her along as well. A um, couple of other things. Oh, talking about family, um, Demily says, uh, not a question, um, but I'm loving Brella's new Instagram page. 
Yeah, those of you who don't know, my two lovely girls have started their own Instagram journeys, um, very much in mind of helping others. So Lily, as you know, Lily Earl Official, she chronics a lot of hidden disability and chronic pain alongside her cell return, which is her work page, talking about LED, which is principally for pain relief and not has been misrepresented by a few rather unpleasant people in the media suggesting it's about something else. It's not. It's very much about cell regeneration and pain. Um, anyway, more of that another time. This is not the time to go into that now. But Lily Earl, her page is uh, often championing um, hidden disability and she's a worry because pain obviously is hidden whether it's pain of grief or whether it's physical pain that we're suffering you can't see it you know if someone's got a scar uh, or if someone's outwardly sick uh, you can see it but but pain is often hidden and incredibly debilitating as I know friends who are suffering at the moment with pain um, and then Lily, not Bre Lily's younger sister, Brella, has just started an Instagram page. It's called By Brella. And she's been going through her own wellness journey these last few years. And she's decided to actually open up and share, which is really nice. So she talks about anxiety, mental health, particularly for young people, eating disorders, uh, more of which later, and gut health. So if you have uh, any member of your family affected by mental health issues, particularly young ones, maybe starting university or at uni um, or having any issues with disordered eating, then you might want to point them in the direction of Vibrella. And I'm super proud of her as a mum that she's taken that step because it's, it's not easy and it's a challenge, you know, believe me, when you open yourself up particularly. Uh, for social media. G Greg Gick says here, I love your girls' pages, especially Brella's, to whom I can direct my own daughter at the same age. Somehow she listens more to someone the same age. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I have a, I have a, fong, a strong feeling that Brella will help many with her journey. She's learned a lot and she's very open to sharing and learn more, as is Lily. Um, a couple of other quick questions. This isn't really meant to be a big Q&A, but um, I'm being asked what vitamins I take. <laughs> uh, OK, so you will find that on lizardwellbeing.com. There's a whole page I put together. Uh, some of the things, actually, I've, I've got them here, in fact. That's the Youth and Earth Preservage. That's my current go-to. This is full of quercetin, resveratrol, boosting sirtuin activity. Longevity, if you want to know all about that, then <laughs> head over to Lizard Wellbeing. Um, and I do, of course, take my collagen, Ingenious Beauty, Ooh, Ingenious Beauty Collagen. And this is my magnesium. Um, I'm taking, actually, no, I've put the wrong one here. That's the Strong Nutrients. They have a very good uh, magnesium. We were going to do a live with Zana Morris on Thursday about Strong Nutrients. We've actually pushed that forward. But I do use a lot of the Strong Nutrients. And in fact, I have my um, cup of tea with me mm. for tea and something else I've started to do in later years is add a teaspoon of this to my tea, creatine. You can find out all about it on the website. Um, creatine is really good for helping to build muscle. We lose muscle mass as we age. So just very simply, um, that's what I do. And I'm also munching my way through. <laughs> Anybody else got no mosu? Stands for no more sugar. You can see I only have a very small piece left, but I'm enjoying this with my morning coffee and it's a great brand. Go and check them out. We've got Liz Loves, of course, on all of those, um, but it's no sugar chocolate. And of course, the dark chocolate, full of polyphenols, very good for gut health. And as always, lots more in the magazine, which I hope that you are settling down to read and enjoy. A um, few other questions. I won't answer them here. I might try and come back. I'm not going to do a live on Thursday, but I'll be home at the weekend. So uh, maybe I might turn my video back on then. Um, yeah, there's not going to be any commercial live with any other brand founders this week. But yeah, maybe Saturday. Let's see how this week goes. So uh, very nice to see you all. I'll say goodbye. Thank you for sharing your memories, your happy times. Thank you for being part of this supportive community and just taking a moment to remember that actually it was the support for others during lockdown that actually started 
this wellness community and I think it's a really wonderful resource and knowledge that we have that we can come together as a resource and as a community and share and connect. Social media often gets a bad rap, doesn't it? And it's certainly, you've got to be judicious with it. And there are cautions and caveats as with so many things in life. But I think at times like this, we can all use it for good. And I can see all your hearts. I send you hearts back. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, thanks for sharing. Been really, really nice. Sabine says, life can be hard sometimes. The Liz Our Wellbeing community is so helpful. Thank you. On that note, I shall love you and leave you. See you very soon.